which is 6.2 or 9.15, consideration to rescind urgency ordinance number 3114 requiring all persons regardless of COVID-19 vaccination status wear face coverings in county facilities. And Mr. The, Chair, I'm trying to ascertain the whereabouts of the health services director. Um, and I don't see him in Zoom. Is he here? Yes. Okay, there he is. Okay. And then also we are told the public health officer, Dr. Eric, is here as well, but um, I don't see him here. Dr. Eric, are you here? He said he is here and watching. I'd uh, like to bring him in to uh, where we are now, but um, okay. Matthew, can you locate him? Yes, so my recommendation is that we ask the Zoom user. I'm going to allow Zoom user to talk and see if that's Dr. McLaughlin real quick. Thank you, Matthew. I see Zoom, Zoom user's hands up. Yeah, this is, uh, this is Dr. McLaughlin. Oh, Apologies. Oh, great. great. Okay. Great, thank you. We have who we need. Okay. Uh, Jonathan, you're, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, supervisors. Thank you, Carol. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, so we are making an amendment to uh, 3114, uh, I believe, uh, changing the from mandatory to strongly recommended uh, for uh, masking in the county facility. However, um, I would like to allow space for Dr. Eric McLaughlin to um, elaborate between the difference of highly recommended in certain facilities and still remaining mandatory in others. Yeah, thank you. And, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak in front of the board today and, uh, and the public. So I, I'd like to extend my gratitude for that. You know, we're, we're proud of a lot of the hard work that's been done here with, uh, with the public health department and the community. Uh, listening to guidance, following advice, and, uh, and learning as we evolve through this pandemic. Um, California Department of Public Health has put forward some very um, forward-facing guidance that, that we're following that um, is, is removing the, the mandate of masks uh, in schools and in indoor buildings. There are a few caveats, and um, I'll, I'll get into those here briefly, but um, the... Uh, the, the thing I want to stress is that masking is still strongly recommended. And, and I want to take a minute to unpack that. Um, the literature is very clear that we do not have, a, a, in my opinion, a better tool for preventing spread of COVID uh, non-pharmaceutically, meaning vaccines are great and masks are great as well. So these are some of your most important tools to prevent getting sick these are some of your most important tools to prevent making your neighbors and fellow citizens sick. I really want to stress that it is prudent and wise to use masks, especially if you are unable to physically distance yourself in indoor spaces. I also think it's important for certain high risk populations to really consider utilizing masks uh, Additionally, for, for, for longer periods of time, this may be people at home that you live with that are immunocompromised or medically fragile. This could be children that are unable to receive the vaccine due to their age. This could be individuals who have not yet benefited from having a full vaccine complement in, in their system. Um, so I, I really want to focus on that language of still strongly recommended, but no longer required. Now, I alluded to that there are a few places that this is not um, going to be applicable. And this is kind of going from, from CDPH guidelines as well. And, and loosely, you know, this is available in much greater detail on their websites. But um, this is uh, obviously as we're on the 8th, um, K through 12 schools still have this in place through March 11th. And, and that rescinds at midnight. Um, public transports will remain in effect. These are um, trains, subways, buses, taxis, um, emergency shelters, uh, cooling and heating centers. This is going to be more important as we enter into fire season. Healthcare settings, uh, state and local correctional facilities and detention centers, homeless shelters, and long-term care and adult and senior care facilities. 
So those are some of the places that still benefit from having that masking mandate in place. The others are now moving to what we call strongly recommended uh, for the reasons I just elaborated on. And uh, I think it's important to remember that while we have moved very happily from the red tier to the yellow tier, um, it is not a time to let our guard down. And this is a time to still be vigilant um, as we hopefully enjoy yellow tier progress down to green tier. And I'm happy to take any questions and appreciate the opportunity to speak today. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. McLaughlin. Director Portney, do you have anything else to add to that or? No additional comments. Okay. Are there any questions from the board? Supervisor Sabatier. I appreciate that there was a clarif clarification made that uh, we are in the yellow tier. I know uh, when this was written, I believe we were in the red tier. And then when this was uh, posted on the agenda as a whole on Friday, um, as of less than 24 hours before that, it had changed over to yellow. So I appreciate that, uh, appreciate the, um, opportunity to discuss this uh, as well and being able to uh, move forward. I think everybody's looking for some kind of uh, that light at the end of the tunnel. I think that this, uh, the state had started that and we're continuing on with this. So I appreciate this being brought to us. Thank you so much. Anything else from the board? All right, hearing nothing, uh, we'll go to the uh, chambers to see if there's anybody that would have anything to comment on this for public input. Not seeing anyone, we have a, a hand up on Zoom. Um, we have two hands up on Zoom. So we'll start with Carlos Bono. Uh, please unmute, you have three minutes. Um, good morning, my name is Carlos Bono. Uh, I wanna first, I wanna make something very clear. This whole pandemic in the past two years, it's not been about people's health at all. It's been about control and it's been about imposing illegal and unconstitutional mandates on people. This is a test. This is to see how, how far you can push people. And, and, and obviously, you push them a little too far. In Kazakhstan, people rose up when their money was, uh, when, they were, when, they were, uh, when the government tried to take their money. The same thing happened in Canada. As soon as they started freezing accounts, people got really angry. These mask mandates don't work. Masks don't work. And the uh, entire thing has been a complete fraud on the public. Vaccines don't work. They're, they cause more harm than good. It's, you're, they're 12 times more, you're 12 times more likely to die from the vaccine than you are from COVID. So I, that's all I have to say. And I'd really like people to start waking up. Thank you. Director Portney. Yeah, thank you for your uh, comments. Uh, and uh, I just want to express, uh, as Eric, Dr. Eric and I uh, continue to have this conversation working with uh, state and, and feds to um, uh, follow appropriate guidelines for the CDC, I want to express how important it is uh, with the strong recommendation and understanding there are still vulnerable populations that now more than ever, it's a time to respect people's decisions and be kind uh, to those who choose to wear a mask or those who forego choose to not wear a mask, uh, particularly during this transition period. And there may be many reasons uh, that doctor may want to elaborate on that people may choose to wear masks. And um, at this point in time, uh, we want to be sure that as individuals, as a county, as a community, uh, we respect that choice. Uh, that's the end of my comment. And doctor, if you would like to elaborate on what vulnerable populations look like, I think that might shed light on uh, the importance for some to wear masks. Yeah, and thank you for that. Um, you know, individuals can choose to or choose to not wear a mask. Some of the reasons why an individual may want to wear a mask are that they're not yet comfortable. They still feel more secure and safe wearing their mask. They may choose to continue to wear a mask to protect others in their community, to decrease their spread of virus particles. A symptomatic spread is possible with this illness and that's what's very concerning to a lot of us. Uh, you may not know if you have it and are spreading it to others. Some people may choose to wear a mask to prevent that. 
Others may live or be themselves medically fragile or immunocompromised. Those are also good reasons to continue wearing a mask. You may live with someone who is unable to receive the vaccine for whatever reason, whether they've had prior vaccine reactions, whether they're uneligible due to allergies, or whether they're just uneligible due to age. Those are good reasons to continue wearing a mask. You may feel more comfortable out in a work environment, working with your peers, with your partners, wearing a mask, and that's okay. This is not the time to let down our guard. This is the time to stay vigilant. Uh, I'm happy that the recommendations have moved from required to recommended. And I want to emphasize strongly recommended. Um, but uh, there are lots of reasons why individuals may still continue to choose to wear a mask. Those are just a few of them. Uh, other populations may have difficulty in accessing health care. Native Americans, uh, Latinx community, these disenfranchised communities often have access and, and barriers to health care. Those are good reasons to continue wanting to wear a mask. I, I applaud and respect individuals' choices in this matter, and I champion that. This is your choice. This is not the time to make a flippant decision. This is a decision to look at you, your own medical status, and the medical status of those you live with. Do the right thing for your community. And thank you. Thank you, Dr. McLaughlin and Director Portney. Is there anything else to add on that? Or Okay. We'll move on to the next uh, person that has their hand up, Julia Bono. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> My name is Julia Bono. I have degrees in scientific research. I'm here today to speak firmly against the use of mask mandates under any circumstances to prevent the transmission of the SARS-CoV-2 virus that causes the COVID-19 disease. I'm pleased to note that mask mandates have generally been dropped in California, and I would urge Lake County to follow suit in all county facilities and for schools to eliminate mask mandates immediately. My extensive research on this topic has turned up hundreds of peer-reviewed science studies that show surgical ear loop masks are generally ineffective against preventing the transmission of particles less than around 60 microns. Since tiny virons like SARS-CoV-2 that is associated with COVID-19 are on the order of 0 0.125 microns and can only be seen with an electron microscope, they are 480 times smaller than the filter size. Mandating the wearing of porous surgical ear loop masks in response to COVID-19 is as much of a folly as trying to stop a swarm of bees with a chain link fence. Even the packaging of those same surgical masks specifically states that the product will not provide any protection against the COVID-19 coronavirus or other viruses. Even the better N95 face masks show notably limited effectiveness in science studies against COVID-19 due to its very small size. Using and mandating the use of such masks to prevent the transmission of COVID-19 is therefore not justified by science, gives a false sense of security, and is not a use recommended by their manufacturers. Not only are such masks ineffective in COVID-19 transmission, but various studies show they call breathing issues, acne, headaches, reduce empathy, body, have bo and, and body language communication, have other adverse psychological impacts like causing excessive fear and result in antisocial behavior, among other problems associated with mask wearing. While I believe voluntary mask wearing should remain a personal choice, mask mandates are an especially a necessary, odious, and heavy-handed public policy approach in response to COVID-19 that mainly serves to increase fear levels at, uh, and control and reduce uh, physical and psychological wellness among the population. Such deeply flawed policies seem especially problematic when valid peer-reviewed scientific research states that the standard surgical face masks are just not effective. For forcing healthy people to wear ineffective face masks when in public to prevent the spread of a sub-microscopic virus not only potentially harms them, but it also contributes to a shortage of such masks for the very medical professionals who do actually need them to protect against the transmission of bacterial infections. Also, I'm still hearing medical professionals on this call pushing vaccination against COVID-19. Everyone listening should know that these injections do cause harm and have minimal effectiveness in preventing new COVID cases. So they give the vaccinated a false sense of security. The vaccines have now reported killed 25,000 people, according to the CDC, yielding a death rate of roughly 87 per million, which is higher than the current Omicron strain that only kills around nine per million cases. This makes the vaccines roughly 10 times more deadly than the virus itself. Finally, you can also notably reduce your chances of suffering from moderate to severe COVID and the chronic diseases that exacerbated if you can wrap up your statement 
by following a whole food plant-based diet as a sizable recent study suggests. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have phone 4627. If you can unmute, you have three minutes. Uh, good morning, everyone. This is Tom Slate. And uh, these are just a few of my thoughts, one person's perspective. And I don't know that I've ever heard anybody opposing people wearing masks who want to wear them. I've never heard that before. I'm not opposed to others wearing masks. And as usual, as I would expect these I know early treatments, ivermectin and HCQ and others are completely left out of this. But the reason I think we're here is this mask mandate in Lake County, and maybe I'm misunderstanding. It ha if I go back, if I recall, Jessica came in some months back ago with this emergency idea for the agenda that people should wear masks in, in the county buildings because of so many cases, if I understand that right. And... And it was a, and I think that's why we're here. I'm, maybe I'm misunderstanding. And then, but I called in a Cobb Area Council meeting sometime after that and asked Jessa to tell us about cases. How are they determined? And she said, it's, I have this written here, um, based on a positive test. And I saw, so well, asked, tell me more. She said, it's the standard test. And I asked, well, tell me more. I'm paraphrasing here. And she said that I would have to ask the health officer. So I'm under the impression she doesn't know. You know, it's a test. She's aware of that, and I think that's correct. But a test she apparently could tell me absolutely nothing about. I think you'll find it's the PCR test. I think everybody, everybody else seems to know that. I don't know. But uh, it was troubling to me that this was passed but, uh, because of Jessica's concern about the results of these tests that, that she couldn't tell me anything about. And I've, and I think there's a lot of fear. I'm not faulting anybody. There's a lot of extreme fear that I think maybe people are basing this on. And I'm not particularly afraid of it. I'm concerned, but I'm 78 years old and I'm not living in fear. But anyways, that whole idea that this is based on what happened at that meeting about the test, about cases, that, and Jessica couldn't explain what, the, what that test was about. And I, I find that troubling. I just want to point that out. And um, that's all I have to say for today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Chair, I just want to remind everybody, including us, that we, we are discussing the rescinding of a specific ordinance. It seems to be very nebulous about COVID versus the specifics of what the, the actual agenda item is. I just right. want to remind everyone. Thank you for that. Next, we have Christina. Christina, if you can unmute, you have three minutes. And uh, let's try to keep it to the subject, if at all possible. Okay, well, I have very little to say about mask wearing, except that many, many people have worn them and COVID has increased. The masks have proven to be ineffective. They have proven to be dumbing down our populations, specifically children. Um, I feel so sorry for them, the tiny toddlers having to view uh, the public wearing masks, it's a scary thing for them psychologically. They're not able to do their language development. Their brain development has been slowed down, everything. Um, it's, it's pretty ridiculous. Um, COVID wouldn't, would be gone now if vaccines and masks were working. They have not worked. And in fact, um, COVID has increased according to our world and data um hospitalizations and even deaths have increased right. and that's not to scare people because there is early intervention and preventative treatment that has been suppressed and i'm done i please do your homework people and quit leading us to this totalitarianism Okay, thank you. Um, is there anyone that would like to add to that or has any? Now I don't see, and I don't see anybody else with their hands up. Is there anybody else in the chambers that uh, has anything? It uh, looks like we have a, uh, Director Portney. I'll go ahead and close public comment and uh, bring it to you, Doctor uh, Director Portney, sorry. Thank you, and you know, there, I heard a couple great points, uh, especially around nutrition and eating healthy. Um, I think that's really important, just in general. Uh, there are certain um, health behaviors that we could take just on our day-to-day -day life that can uh, uh, improve our quality of life and longevity. 
uh, and drinking a significant amount of water, making sure you're getting exercise, great sleep, um, positive relationships. Uh, we clearly encourage you uh, to do those things amongst uh, many other things um, uh, that contribute to overall health. Um, regarding this uh, topic of discussion on the table, again, uh, the mandatory expectation for masking in this specific county facility, excluding the others that still have the uh, mandate, mask mandate in order, uh, which are listed in the document, <clears throat> are uh, change, shifting to strongly recommended. Now, uh, an important note in this is as a health department, as um, uh, health professionals, uh, it's important to know that the local health jurisdiction and entities uh, may continue in the future to implement potential additional uh, requirements that maybe maybe go beyond state guidance uh, based on local circumstances. So what does that mean? That means that if our hospital infrastructure, if our skilled nursing facilities, if our uh, jails, if our um, uh, hospitals, if they begin to see, uh, as I believe it was Kristen, Christina indicated uh, a potential surge in the future. Uh, we're going to be readdressing this issue. And why? Because we've had a great success from navigating out of the red into the yellow with our community's effort and attention, continued attention to detail. I hope that we can transition into the green. It'll take all of us. It'll take all of us in our effort. And I want to appreciate the comments that were brought to the table today. And um, I appreciate the, the, the grit and the determination of our community to get us to this point of the yellow tier. We're not out of the woods yet. We have a little bit of ways to go. But I hope that this transition from mandatory to strongly recommended brings a little bit of light into that tunnel for our community residents and our, and our health care facilities. So thank you. And uh, again, I'm looking forward to the strongly recommended shift. And we're looking forward to the to the future. Thank you, Director Portney. And Supervisor Sabati. So this is uh, very obvious what it's like on the face. Uh, anybody that walks into a county facility will have the choice uh, to put on a mask or not. My question is to admin, what is the, and I'm sure everybody in this building is asking, what is the impact to our staff? Because I think we still have Cal OSHA rules. Uh, and I would take it that us as Board of Supervisors are also under the term of staff. Um, what, what are the rules and regulations that are, will be continuing inside the facility when it comes to its employees? Um, the HR director plans to come to your board next week or very soon with an update to the COVID protocol. As far as employees are concerned, the guidance would still stand that uh, unvaccinated employees may uh, are, are not required to mask, but uh, or vice versa. Me, I you said mean? that by sir, uh, sorry, I said that backwards. Unvaccinated people would be employees would still be required to mask. At this point, we would be basing that on the honor system with employees. And that's if this is approved today uh, at the board level that that rule would come into play, or we wait till next week. Yeah, and we should clarify that any employee that wishes to wear a mask may do so at any time, regardless of, of, of vaccination status. Of course. And so, yes, that would go into effect immediately, and then we'd get the official policy clarification out next week when you update the protocol. Thank you for that comment or that response. Thank you. With that, uh, is there anything else from the board? Looking for uh, action. Mr. Chair, I move to rescind ordinance Urgency ordinance number 3114. Second. So I have a motion in the second. Johanna, please conduct the roll call. Okay, Supervisor Svante. Aye. Supervisor Scott. Aye. Supervisor Paiska. Yes. And Supervisor Crandall. Aye. Thank you.